Well hello everyone, my name is Wiggle and welcome back to another video. This week we're taking a look at Pokemon Scythe. A ROM hack that takes place after the events of Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia. The game has an entire new region to explore called the Colon Region. And apparently there is also a part of Hoenn you can explore in the post game. They also use the black and white to soundtrack and other changes are the physical special split. A new evil team called Team Void a day and night system, fairy type, reusable TMs, and a lot of quality of life changes. Before we get into the story of the game itself, since this game is based off of Pokemon Ranger, let me know what your favorite side series Pokemon game is. For me, it's definitely Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, and I would absolutely go nuts if they ever remake that game. And also, don't forget to subscribe, because only about 27% of you guys actually are subscribed, so let's get that number up. And while you're down there, don't forget to smash that like button as well. Let's try to aim for 12 likes. And with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Side. We get greeted by Professor Waddles as we spawn into the region who looks an awful lot like Professor Sycamore. Perhaps they're long lost twins. So we pick our character which is now an updated sprite of the Pokemon Emerald sprite. You're just a little bit taller. And then we wake up in our room, go downstairs to our mother who explains why we're here and not in the Hoenn region. Well, apparently in the Horn region, there was a big explosion in old Mauville 10 years ago and everything was full of radiation. So the entire Hoenn region had to evacuate to this region to try and build up their new life. Once she's done explaining everything, she sends me on to find Professor Waddles to grab my starter Pokemon. Before he gives me my Pokemon though, he sends me on a dangerous mission to a nearby forest to pick up a special berry. Once I pick up the berry, a Sceptile pops up out of nowhere. And someone says Sceptile returns and then he's gone. Since we don't have a Pokemon yet, we're not going to investigate any further and just go back to the lab. Professor Waddles is stoked that we're back and he is now going to give us our starter Pokemon as a form of gratitude and we get the pick between Fennekin, Turtwig and Oshawott. Since I basically never used Delphox, I decided to go with Fennekin on this one, despite it being one of my least favorite starters. We then also get our Pokedex and we get sent to the first town and once I entered the Poke Center there, we grabbed ourselves a gift Munchlax with the ability Moxie, which is very overpowered. There's not much happening in the first town, so we head on over to the first gym leader immediately who specializes in the electric type. Her name is Cherry and she has a Joltik and a Pachiritsu, but my Munchlax just tackles through both of them, getting me my first gym badge very easily and very quickly. We then continue our journey and find ourselves in a nearby cave where the road is blocked by some Rock Smash rocks. Here's where we meet our rival for the first time. He breaks the rocks for us with a Cyndaquil and then asks for a Pokemon battle. We're clearly not going to say no to this, so let's see if we can stand up to Darlo. My Munchlax once again puts in the work, taking down Pidov and Cyndaquil with just a couple of tackles and winning me my first rival battle. We then already find ourselves in the next town where we have to battle the second gym, but first we see a punk guy that's painting graffiti on the gym and the police is trying to stop him but the police isn't strong enough so we help out a little bit and beat up the gang member once that's done we can freely enter the gym but first i grab myself a fletchling so that once we get to fly we can just use talon flame to get anywhere we want while i was roaming around i also found two team void grunts who were talking about entering a helicopter so being the 10 year old that we are we of course have to show them who is boss then it's time for us to take on the second gym leader who looks an awful lot like Faulkner, but his name is actually Harry Styles, who's gotten psychic powers of some kind because he now has a Chingling and a Drowsy. Fennekin first takes out Chingling with a couple of embers, but then Munchlax finishes off Drowsy with a couple of licks. Two gym badges acquired already, I love the pace that this game is moving at. We then enter the big city with some buildings that you've never seen before in a Pokemon game, and then take the boat to the Light Foundation. 
where Professor Waddles is waiting for us. He tells me that he can introduce me to the founder of this facility here, which would be very nice, so we head to the top of this building and finally find her. Her name is Lori, and she is, of course, the founder of this entire thing, but as we're just talking, an explosion happens on the second floor. They tell me to stay here, but we go down there and help them anyway, as it looks like somebody blew a hole in the wall. And of course, it's the evil team Void again. As it turns out, they're here to steal a shadow crystal. We don't really know what it does yet, but since it's called a shadow crystal, I don't think it's going to be doing anything good. Once we're done talking here, Team Void attacks me, we easily beat them up and evolve our Fennekin into Brakesin. We scare them off and they tell us that they're going to tell everything to their boss and that this won't be the last time that we see them. Once they're gone, Professor Waddles tells us about the Shadow Crystal and that it's used to summon Darkrai and that's being brought here to research and protect from evil groups. And before he leaves, he tells me that I should just go to the mainland again and not worry too much about this and just continue my Pokemon League challenge. So that's what I do, by beating up every trainer I see, my Fletchling eventually evolves into Fletchinder. And we then find ourselves in the midst of a volcano, which is now the third gym, led by what looks like Price, but it's not Price, it's Kasai. The battle isn't too hard as Brakeson can take down the first two Pokemon, Lidleo and Kulava with Psybeams, but then he brings out Flareon, who just bites me a single time and that uh, takes care of my Brakeson. So I bring in Munchlax. Three tackles later and we get our third gym badge. We then hear some noise in the local storage place and see that Team Void is once again up to no good trying to break into one of the containers. So me and my rival try to stop them, which was pretty damn easy. For me at least, because my rival lost to the other grunt, so they're able to call a helicopter and take the container with them. The police then comes along and tells us that the container was full of fuel cans, which they need probably to power something up. A little bit of time goes by and as I'm traveling, I run into Team Void again on top of the spooky tower. They're once again up to no good, trying to capture as many ghost Pokemon as possible for research purposes. So we shoo them out of the tower with our strong Pokemon, and once we're done beating them up, their boss comes along. He scalds off the two grunts for failing a mission once again and then tells me that his name is Shino. He tells me that their team are going to create a new world and that we should stop messing with them, otherwise bad things might happen to me. That's not going to scare us though, we're still going to keep messing with them. And as it turns out, there is also a gym in this tower, so we go all the way down to go and challenge the next gym leader, Shantae. Which was once again not too hard for me to beat. Fletchinder picked the Ghastly twice and took it out. The next Pokemon, Galette, got licked so much by my Munchlax that he just decided to leave. And with the Moxie attack boost, we can also just lick Magius three times and take her out to win my fourth gym badge. Once we're on the road again, we run into to Darlow shortly after, telling him what happened at the Spiritua Tower, and since he failed his last mission of defeating the Grunts, he now wants to challenge us to try and get stronger. Munchlax once again puts in the work, taking down his first three Pokemon with tackles, but then his Kulava is just a little bit too strong and takes me out with a Flame Wheel. So Fletchinder finishes off this battle with just a couple of pecks. Then once again scuffles off with his tail between his legs, and we then run into Team Void, who are once again up to no good, as they're clearly setting up for something big. They seem to have completed one of their missions in the forest, but then the Sceptile turns up again, just like in the beginning of the game, and scares them all off. Once I go up to the Sceptile, Lori also comes out of the woods, which means that this must be her Sceptile. We try to speculate together what they're trying to do, because we have no idea what they need with fuel and ghost Pokemon, but we can't seem to come to a conclusion. But she does explain to me that she's not a regular trainer, she's a Pokemon Rager, so she doesn't use Pokeballs. She's basically here to try and research the Void Crystal and make sure that it stays safe. She then hires me as some sort of spy who has to report anything Team Void related to her. We then get released and find our way to Darlow's hometown who introduces us to his grandma who has a lot of stories to tell. As it turns out, the Shadow Crystal can send people to some sort of Shadow Realm and apparently there's still a bunch of people trapped in there. That's why the crystal is now being researched by scientists to try and bring those people back. One day a kid fell out of the crystal and that that kid was our trusty rival Darlow. The scientist also asked him questions, but he did not remember anything of his time in the crystal except 
for hearing some voices. As it turns out, he also has a condition that the atoms in his body can't hold him together or something. Which sounds pretty bad, but apparently it doesn't really affect him in a bad way. Once we're done talking about everything, it's time for us to take on the next gym leader who is now a grass type user. So my two fire types, Fletchinder and Brixen, easily wiped her entire team in a matter of seconds, giving me my next gym badge and us being able to move on to the next round where we run into Darlo once again, who is ready for another battle. And this is basically just a repeat of the last battle taking out Tynamo, Tranquil and Floatzel with Munchlax's body slams and then eventually taking out Kalava with Fletchinder's pecs. Shortly after the battle is done, my Munchlax evolves into a Snorlax, losing the Moxie ability, so he's not going to be that useful anymore. Once we arrive in the next town, Team Void is trying to take over the docks. They apparently got themselves a very big ship and are heading for the port, so we're going to try and stop them. Their leader is already on the pier, and Darlo just lost another Pokemon battle against him. The boss then tries to explain to me that they're not trying to do something bad here, they're trying to create a world where everybody will be helping each other. Of course, we're not that gullible, so we don't believe him, but it's already too late. They have gathered everything they needed and are already on their way back home. Lori is going to follow their ship from the skies, and we have to just go on our way and do the next gym. But first, we go to the local Pokemon Center to scare off some leftover grunts who totally forgot they had to board the ship. And so we get the HM for Fly as a reward for scaring them off. Then we grab ourselves a Weasel as our water type so that we can crawl the sea ourselves. We also immediately evolve into Floatzel after that and head on over to the next gym who is led by Amatias, but if you reverse that name, it says Saitama from One Punch Man. One of the only animes I've actually watched in my life, and I'm still waiting for season 3. So I'm actually very stoked to see him in this game. He of course has a fighting type gym, but since we still have Fletchinder on the team and now have a strong flying type move in Fly, we can easily take out every single one of his Pokemon with the same move again. Boom, another gym match acquired, and we waste no time, we head on over to the next town and challenge the next gym leader immediately, who is a dark type gym leader. And his name is Yami, which reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh from Yabi Yugi. And he actually starts off with a Pokemon that's not a dark type, a Skorupi, but my McMunch can body slam him twice to take him out, just like the next Pokemon Krokorok. But then he has an Umbreon, a very bulky Pokemon, who is almost able to take us out with faint attacks, but in the end we still manage to win. Then a Murkrow comes out, who finally finishes me off with wing attacks, so I bring in Fletchinder, fly it two times in a row, and pound it into the ground, and the last Pokemon, Nutsleaf, also gets destroyed by a single fly, so that's seven gym badges acquired. War is already waiting for us at the Foundation of Light to try and stop Team Void because they have infiltrated the entire facility. Once we reach the top of the facility, we barge into the room and see that Sheno and his grunts are already stealing the crystal. He of course laughs in our faces that he's already got the crystal, and basically won, and he thinks that there's no way that we can stop him anymore, so he sends his grunts at us, we make quick work of them as always, and once the battle is over, Sheno takes me on himself, because we're apparently the only thing that can stop him from completing his plan. McMunch once again puts in the work, taking out the first two Pokemon Zipstrika and Seedra with body slams, but I'm only left with 5 HP, so Drudigan can then take me out with a slash. I try to take out the Drudigan with the combined powers of my Floatzel and Fletchinder, but both of them get taken out by Dragon Claws before I can then bring in Brixen, who can finally finish this thing off with Psybeam. The last Pokemon is a Drapion, so I just Ember it a couple of times. I know I'm still using Ember, I still haven't found anything better, but we still managed to win in the end. After he loses, he says that we're just a lucky child and that we battle so recklessly that he could easily beat us if he wanted to. You know, just the regular sore loser pep talk, but he also says that he has captured our good friend Darlo and that he's going to use him to research the crystal to try and help them. Luckily, just as he vanishes, Lori tells us the location of the Team Void's lab where we can go to put a stop to all of this. So we walk into this big rocket looking thing, which is the Team Void headquarters, and me and her scan the entire base, taking out every grunt we can see until Fletchinder evolves into Talonflame. Once that's done, we find Darlo's cell and we enlight him of everything that's happened in the past couple of hours. He tells us that they took some of his DNA because that can help them with reviving Darkrai. 
which is pretty bad. So once we've given his Pokemon back and freed him from his cell, we can go and challenge the boss man himself. He already expected us to come, so he's prepared. And he actually wanted us to be here so that we can witness everything with our very own eyes. They put the Dark and Ghost type Pokemon as well as the Crystal in this machine together with the DNA of our boy here to restore the Crystal to its former glory. They tried to set up the machine, but it failed somehow. He was just trying to bring back his father from the Crystal, but instead he spawned Darkrai. So he captures it and adds it to his team so that he can try to fulfill his father's wish of creating a new world. Once he has Darkrai, he just vanishes in thin air, and we head back to Light Island to talk with Lori and tell her everything that happened. She tells us that there is a way to stop them by purifying the crystal with the red, blue, and yellow gems which are being guarded by very good Pokemon trainers which we all have to beat in order to gain access to the crystals. She takes us to the locations of the crystals, the first one being inside a volcano. And in the middle of it we see one of the guardians. We explain to him everything that's happened but he's still not willing to give us the crystal just like that. We have to prove our self-worth by defeating him. A ton of his Pokemon were just weak to my Floatzel Surf so we took all of them out and washed them out of this volcano. As he then finally recognizes my strength and gives me the red gem. The next gem is hidden in Patter Forest and it should be the yellow gem, so that's where we're headed next. The same thing happens here, a guardian challenges us again. We clean out her entire team with Delphox's flamethrowers and that's that, we get the yellow gem. The last gem is a blue gem and this one is actually hidden from everything and everyone inside a blue cave. It isn't guarded by anyone because no one seemed to know where it was until we stumbled upon it. So we take it with us, grab a Snorun to add to our team and evolve it into a Glalie, and then we head to the top of Mount Disord where Team Void is already executing their master plan. He once again says that he expected us and that he wants us to be the first faces to see his new world. He also knew that we were collecting the three gems and told us that he destroyed the Shadow Crystal and that the gems are basically useless now. He then tells Darkrai to start creating the new world where he will be the new god and then jumps into one of the portals and tells me that I should come and take him on. Lori stays behind to try and warn everybody in this world right now while we go and clean up the mess. We head in and find ourselves in the distortion world. We go up to him and he just says some edgy lines like being a god and being disappointed in us because we are being so narrow-minded and I have absolutely had enough of this guy so I'm going to beat him and throw him off that cliff. He first has a Zep Striker who can outspeed my Glilly and hit me with three sparks to take me out but I also hit two Ice Fangs which sets him up for my Floatzel to take it out with an Aqua Jet. Togekiss comes out, hits me with two extreme speeds but barely does any damage so my Surfs can clean it out of here. Drudigan then comes out, he was a big obstacle in the last battle and he's once again going to take us out with a Dragon Claw. We then come in with Delphox, side beam in twice, take him out but we also get hit with a Crunch leaving us with only about half of our HP left going into the next Pokemon Kingdra. We also manage to damage it for about half of its HP but we get taken out by a Brine. McMunch then comes in and body slams that Kingdra out of here just like the next Pokemon Drapion but then Darkrai is able to take me out so Talonflame has to come in, use a fly, some bulk ups and then finally finish it off with a couple of flame charges. Just like that we defeated Sheno and Darkrai disappears. He's still mad though that we defeated him, so he's taking us on with the same team but without Darkrai, so I'm just going to skip over this battle. Once we defeat him for a second time, he finally gives in and says that we are the stronger trainer and that this world is probably going to fall apart without Darkrai, so he sends us back to the real world while he stays behind in his quote-unquote perfect world where he wants to die. And that's the end of Team Void. Once we step through the portal, we wake up in our own bed with our mom standing behind us. As it turns out, Lori saved us and put us here, otherwise who knows what would have happened to us. Darlo, Lori, and the professor all come and say hello to me and thank me for everything that I've done. The professor even gives me a master ball, but we're not going to be using that anytime soon. Because we still got a lot of things to do, as we have to complete our Pokemon League challenge by taking on the final gym leader. Yuk. And he doesn't specify in a single typing as he just uses Pokemon that he likes. And since Talonflame now learned acrobatics, this battle was very easy for me to win. As we killed Magmortar, 
Spiritum, Greninja, and Nidoking with a single acrobatics, and then we finally go into Snorlax, his last Pokemon, who takes me out with body slams. He then also takes out my Glalie with body slams while I try to take it out with headbutts, but a full restore saved him from destruction. I then go for the mirror match, sending in my own Snorlax, and Mukmunch body slams it two times to win myself my final gym badge. We head on over to Victory Road where Darlow has already catched up with us. And of course, he's going to want one last battle before we challenge the Elite Four and Champion. We easily overpower his first Pokemon Unpheasant with my Glalie's Ice Fangs. Floatzel Surf is easily able to wash away his Typhlosion, but then Electros tries to counter me, but I swap into Snorlax at the right moment and body slam it twice, once again finishing it off. Snorlax also sits on his Floatzel's face and that uh, kills it, and the last Pokemon is Fracture. His Dragon Claw finally stops my Snorlax in its tracks, so I bring in Glalie, Ice Fang and R Shard hit, and that's our last rival battle out of the way. I wanted to add one more team member before taking on the Pokemon League, so I grabbed the Pikachu and evolved it into Raichu. With all of this out of the way, we finally reached the Elite Four, and our first contestant is Erdes, a long-lost brother of Rourke. Pretty fitting since he also specialized in rock types, starting out with a Barbarical. Two of Raichu's Thunderbolts and it's down though. He then brings in the best Pokemon of all time, Swampert, but our very own Water-type Floatzel is going to take care of it. The rest of his team, Golem, Rhyperior and Agron all get washed away by Surfs. And that's the first Elite Four member defeated already. The next Elite Four member is Suora. And he has flying types, not water types, despite him looking like Wallace. And this is the exact reason why I have Raichu on the team now. We Thunderbolt Staraptor, then we Thunderbolt Crobat, Skarmory as well. A Pokemon of our own, Talonflame, and then finally Northern goes down to Thunder. And that is that. Second Elite Four member defeated. The next player we're going to have to face is Yosei, and she has uh, fairy types. We don't really have a particular Pokemon to deal with her, so we start out with Snorlax against or Slurpuff. And he immediately starts putting in the work by sitting on Slurpuff, Azumarill, and then forges his faces, body slamming every single one of them and taking them out. I swapped out into Glade for the next Pokemon Togekiss, Ice Beamed it twice, and that throws it back to the Ice Age. The last Pokemon on her team is Gardevoir, and we stop all of the simps in their path by bringing in Chico and thundering it, and then using Thunderbolt to end off this battle. One more Elite Four member to go. Let's see what Naga, a fusion of Juan and Lance, has in store for us. It turns out that the Lance part of him took over because he has Dragon types starting off with a Drudigan. Snorlax once again shows his mighty power as he overpowers Drudigan and Shellgon easily with body slams, but Dragonair is able to swap me out with a Dragon Tail. But it swaps out into an even bigger threat, Talonflame, who is easily able to one-shot this Dragonair with Acrobatics, as well as the next Pokemon, Flygon, with two of them, and the last Pokemon on his team is a Garchomp. In Cynthia's hands, I would be very scared of this thing, but in the Juan Lance Fusion, I don't think it's going to be as strong. It is able to take out my Talonflame, so it's still a nothing to mess with. But I still have Glalie in the back, I sharded two times in a row after he uses the full restore, and that's our final Elite Four member done. So let's see who the champion really is. If you have followed the story just a little bit, you already know it's going to be none other than Lori. Despite being a Pokemon Ranger and she not using Pokeballs, I can still see that she has Pokeballs up there. So she might be a liar, maybe she's actually the evil team. Let's stop her before anything else happens. We once again start out with Snorlax and kill her first Pokemon Swellow with a Body Slam and a Crunch. Then her ace Pokemon Sceptile comes out. Luckily we have something that can easily deal with that, Talonflame. Acrobatics, outta here. Next Pokemon, Gastrodon, two Acrobatics, out of here again, but it was able to set up some rain. She then sends out her Gudra, and I'm a little bit scared of this, so I go into Glilly, Ice Beam it twice, but get hit with a Muddy Water, leave me with only about half of my HP left, going into the next Pokemon, Volcarona. Volcarona can survive a single surf from Floatzel, but then Zoroar comes out, who is night slashing me, and that's the end of Floatzel. We don't have anything super effective against it, so I bring in my Raichu, Thunder, and then Thunderbolt, and that's the end of Zoroark, and also the end of Lori. 
She once again congratulates us for completing the Pokemon League and also for saving the region. And that is the end of Pokemon Scythe. And if we look at the Hall of Fame screen, we see that we also used a Pinaco and an Espeon somewhere, which I can't really recall. But that's going to be the end of Pokemon Scythe for me. I am going to give this game like a 6 out of 10. The story is just a little bit edgy with the boss of the evil team always talking about the same things in my opinion. But I do like that the game is really fast paced, like you go from one gym to another, from one event to another, it's really quick not too much time in between so if you want a quick rom hack that is also decently good definitely check out pokemon scythe with all of that out of the way i want to thank my membership and patreon supporters as always if you want to support the channel yourself you can click the links in the description it is always appreciated but not needed and last but not least don't forget to leave a like subscribe and share this video with your friends i'm swiggo and i'll see you guys next time